Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Great is the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is like unto our God. How great is our God. How great is his name. Lord Jesus, you are awesome in this place. You are the almighty God, and beside you there is no other God. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. There is no shadow of turning in thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, righteous, awesome, magnificent name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, who is like unto our God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Good morning, family. Good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning, early risers. Good morning, faithful sons and daughters of the Most High God. It does my heart good to see hallelujah as soon as the the um the channel opens the platform is set up persons begin <clears throat> begin to jump on uh at this time of the morning and this hour in this fourth watch hour and that that pleases my heart because it tells me that you're not just up but you're up and ready you're not just in the set position but you're ready to race you're ready to to go to war you're ready to fire you're ready to receive from god and you're ready to worship God. And that is a great, great position to be in. The position of set. The position of ready. Hallelujah. 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 I like that um, Marietta. Uh, God-given morning. Hallelujah. Thank God for the God-given morning. He says that his mercies are new every morning. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is the God's faithfulness to us. Great is God's faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. They're new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. So when we get up in the morning, before we're even yawning, before it's even dawning, God's faithfulness, hallelujah, is spawning, spreading across the universe, looking for those whom he wants to bless. Hallelujah. We are the best because God has passed the test, not us. We are not the best because we passed the test. We're the best because Jesus passed the test. Come on, glory to God. He had an opportunity to give up on us. He had an opportunity when he felt discouraged in the garden of gethsemane he had an opportunity to say you know what i don't want to pass this test i i i hey this test is too much i don't know i i look in the future and i see that these people are not appreciative of the sacrifice that i am i am about to make and so i don't know if i still want to make it i don't know i i hey if it be your will daddy let this cup pass from me but since it's not your will let it be done I will still do it. I know Rowan is going to backslide. Rowan is going to turn. Rowan is going to come and accept my sacrifice three, four times and go back like a dog to his own vomit. But I'm still going to do it. Come on, somebody. Uh, Sean Chana, how many times, how many times since you've been walking with the Lord have you disappointed God? Have you done something that proved that you didn't continually pass the test but jesus passed the test for he is the best and in our lives he manifests come on glory to god and so it is not us who passed the test it is he who passed the test and so he is the best and then we become the best in him by him and for him and so even in our constant state of repentance that's what makes us the best because our infirmities, our frailties, our faults, our flaws, our weaknesses are made the best because Jesus passed the test. He took our infirmities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed emotionally, psychologically, come on, in our soul, 
in our mind, will, and emotion, in our bodies, we are healed because he has said so. Glory to God most high. What a mighty God we serve. And so I say good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome into our way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us, for making us whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to us your great salvation, so full, so free. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning to each and every one of you, my early riser family. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Those of you on Instagram, bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Facebook, TikTok. Hallelujah. YouTube. I say good morning and welcome into the presence of the living God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty, wonderful, awesome God we serve. I just want to say um, our, our national prayer. Oh, I haven't shared yet. Hallelujah. Our national prayer. Hallelujah. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guard us with thy mighty hand. Keep us today, O Lord, free from evil powers and be our light through countless hours. To our leaders, Father, to our yes. leaders, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, O great defender, grant true wisdom from above. Let justice and truth be ours forever in this land that we love. Teach us true respect for all. Stir our response to duty's call. Strengthen us the weak to cherish. O Lord, give us vision, lest we perish. Knowledge, send us, O Heavenly Father. Grant true wisdom, true wisdom from above. Holy One of Israel, I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. I praise your name. Grant us true wisdom, true wisdom in this season, O God. Give us, teach us true, true respect for all and stir our response to duty's call. Strengthen us, O God, the weak that we might cherish and not wish that they would perish and give us vision as a nation, as a people, lest we perish. Hallelujah. Knowledge, send us, O Heavenly Father. Grant us true wisdom from above. Hallelujah. Glory to God most high. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Most High God. He who is worthy to be praised and worthy to be adored. He who is God all by himself. There is no God like our Jehovah. No God. Hallelujah. No God like our Lord. No God like our Father and our King. No God like Him in anything. Great is the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are worthy of all praise. And to you, hallelujah, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of us. Many are the blessings that you give unto us. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, we want to thank you for your love for us thank you lord thank you lord we want to thank you lord thank you lord that you ever thought of us many are the blessings that you give unto us blessings overflowing like the mighty seas 
Lord, we want to thank you for your love for us. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Fourth watch thanks you, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you ever thought of us. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we faithfully and sincerely thank you this morning. Lord, so many things we have taken for granted. So many issues, situations, circumstances that you have protected us from, that you have guided us through, that you have guarded us against. And often we don't even know and realize so that we can say thanks. But this morning, gracious, wonderful, sovereign God, deliver us from ungratefulness. Deliver us, O oh God, from slothfulness of attitude, in attitude. Deliver us, O oh God Almighty, from not understanding the value, the importance of our relationship with you, and even more so, your relationship with us. Because even when we fail, you prevail. Even when we are in jail and need to have to get bail, your love is never stale. It always prevails. It comes for us. It searches for us. It leaves the 99 and come dedicated to find us and to restore us to our place of peace and joy and love. So this morning, we want to take this opportunity to say thank you, Lord, where we have sinned by just ignoring what you have done for us, where we have continued to sin by ignoring your requirements of righteousness, holiness, and truth. Lord, we repent this morning and say, Father, be merciful, be merciful. Where we are sinning and don't even realize that we're sinning through disobedience to your word, through lack of showing and dem receiving and demonstrating love to others. Lord, we repent. Where we have been in unbelief, unforgiveness, where we have been in self-doubt, self-hate, Lord, we repent where we have despised you through others, where we have dishonored each other, where we have been disobedient to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, this morning we repent and ask your forgiveness. For we desire to come into your, your presence, holy and acceptable. We desire to be washed and cleansed. And so, Lord, search us this day, we pray. Search us in this moment, in this hour. See if there be any wicked ways in us and cleanse us. See if there be anything, O oh God. Look with your microscopic eyes. Look with your eyes that can pierce through every blockage. See if there be anything that Satan can hold on to, that Satan can connect to as something from him or for him. And cleanse us, O oh God. Wash us like you did David with his up. Make us whiter than snow. That you might put us on show. That we might glow as we grow. For your glory and for your name's sake. Have thine own way, O oh Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. We're just the clay. Mold us and make us and teach us your will. Cover us, O oh Lord. Cover us still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty, awesome, wonderful, glorious God we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. Good morning as you come in. Good morning. Good morning. And bless God. I thank God for you. I praise God for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, faithful sons and daughters of the Most High God. I just want to declare a blessing over you as we get into this time. A, few, a couple of minutes of prophesying. Come on. Hallelujah. We want to prophesy. We want to prophesy. We want to prophesy God's love over our lives. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, people of God. Begin to prophesy the scriptures that you know. Hallelujah. Proverbs 27 verse 11 says, Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproached me. Come on, glory to God. And so I prophesy this morning that you will be wise. Each of us will be wise in this season, that we will do make the right decision, that we will do the right. I prophesy that we will make all the right decisions concerning obedience, concerning faithfulness, concerning righteousness, holiness, and truth. I prophesy that no fourth watch family member shall be caught outside of the realm of righteousness, holiness, and truth. I prophesy that no fourth watch family member shall die before their time. I prophesy that no fourth watch family member shall be taken out by the works of Satan. I prophesy that we shall be wise in everything that we say and everything that we do. We shall be wise to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We shall be wise in living by the true doctrine we shall be wise in walking in discernment in the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord we shall be wise to believe and accept and walk in the fruit of the spirit and manifest the gifts of the spirit i declare and decree by prophetic authority that the fourth watch family members are wise beyond their years beyond our years i prophesy that we walk in favor we walk in the goodness of the lord we walk in health and strength prosperity and good success i prophesy that every fourth watch family member walks in love power and self-control in the mighty name of jesus christ regardless of which platform you're on i prophesy that you are strong and mighty through god to the pulling down of every stronghold i prophesy that the work of your hands shall produce great outcomes great harvest in the mighty name of jesus christ Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy that your children shall live long and prosper. They shall be successful. I prophesy that every sickness, every disease, every wickedness that have been sent by Lucifer and his Luciferian followers shall not come to pass against your children. I come against every spirit of rejection, every spirit of depression, every spirit of demoralization, every spirit of abandonment, every spirit of downcast, every spirit of lodibar that have been released against your children and your children's children. I reverse that curse and I command deliverance. I prophesy deliverance over your children right now. Every spirit of mental disorder, I bring that in order to God's word that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. I reverse every curse of, of of mental slowness, of inability to remember, inability to learn. I reverse that curse from your children in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I prophesy that your children are brilliant, your grandchildren are brilliant, that they will go back to school and they will learn and flourish and prosper and increase. Uh, I prophesy that your children that are working now will, will all of a sudden become excellent in their space. And will be promoted, elevated, will receive salary increases, promotion to higher offices. I release the spirit of promotion, the spirit of excellence upon your children and your grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, people of God, prophesy alongside me. Whatever you want to see done to your family, whatever you want to see manifest in this fourth watch hour, whatever you want to see manifest in the fourth watch family, whatever you want to see manifest in your community, in your nation, begin to prophesy come on open your mouths and prophesy because when you prophesy according to God's will that's like worship when you say God I thank you that righteousness holiness and truth prevails in my family in my community in my nation that's worship because God is a lover of righteousness and what God loves makes him happy come on somebody when we begin to prophesy come on I'm trying to teach you how to draw close to God when we say what God 
God admires, when we say what God is saying, and when we do what God wants us to do, that in God's eyes is a form of worship. Come on, it's not just holy, 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 the Lord, God Almighty, Lord, you are awesome in this place. That's worship as well. That's wonderful. But when we obey him, when we do what he wants, when we say what we know he wants to say, hallelujah, that's worship as well. So prophesy, come on, over your community, over your family, over your marriage. I prophesy that my marriage is amazing. My marriage is full of love. My marriage has God as the center, as the glue, as the cord that binds us together, that stops any arguments, any disagreements, any lack, any poverty, any insufficiency, any, any going in opposite directions. I bind every spirit of discord, of separation, of divide in my marriage, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, people of God, prophesy. I declare restoration of everything that the enemy has stolen from my marriage, from my life, from my wife's life, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I prophesy anything Thing that happened to my children before they were able to correct or direct anything that happened to my children that caused them to lose any blessing that God had in store for them. I reverse and destroy that curse in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I declare what they lost is recovered today. Come on, people of God. Take a cue from what I'm saying and just prophesy over your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Diana Hansen, prophesy over your children, over your sons. Prophesy what the enemy stole from your son, especially the oldest one. Come on, begin to reverse and begin to curse every plot, plan, scheme, and trap. Come on, people of God. Prophesy over your children this morning. You have two more minutes. Prophesy, prophesy like your life depended on it. Prophesy that even though Satan has done great and wicked things to your children, to your marriage, to your family. You're single now because your, 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 your marriage broke up, but prophesy that it shall not be the end. God shall bring you together with a mighty man of God, a mighty woman of God. You shall laugh again. You shall love again. You shall live again in the greatness of human interactions as you are living again in the greatness of Jesus' interaction by the Holy Ghost. Come on, prophesy. Prophesy. Your children shall not go hungry. They shall not worry about how they will go to you university. Your children shall not have to borrow student loan. I prophesy that your children shall flourish and prosper and increase, expand and enlarge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You shall not die single. You shall mingle. Hallelujah. 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 Your body shall tingle because you're never going to be single. Come on. Glory to God most high. Prophesy. I shall be a mighty woman of God. I shall be a, a Ruth times two, hallelujah, and my Boaz times two is already released in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over your workplace. I prophesy that my workplace shall produce uncommon blessings for me. I prophesy, come on, prophesy, people of God. Don't be discouraged by the things that are around you. I prophesy, hallelujah, that I shall travel to many countries. I shall, there shall be no nation that shall not have my footprint upon their shores in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I shall not be rejected, delayed, derailed, or denied from entering any nation where God wants me to go in the same way that Paul the Apostle had freedom to travel to every nation. Hallelujah. So shall I, Rowan Eastern Wade, and my wife in tow, Marsha Wade, be able to travel to wherever we're invited or to wherever God wants us to go to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. I prophesy that our passports shall be filled with travel stamps in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I prophesy that we shall go forth into all the world and preach the gospel, winning souls for the kingdom, delivering, setting free free and making whole in the name of Jesus. What are you prophesying? What are you saying over your life this morning? I prophesy that you shall be healthy and strong, wealthy and powerful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy that you shall not die in an untimely death. I come against every spirit of death, every spirit of sickness and disease. I prophesy that cancer shall not be your portion. I prophesy that uh, diabetes and hypertension is broken 
broken and destroyed from your bloodline now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I prophesy that the devil's lies will not take set take root in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I prophesy that where you began is not where you will finish in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I prophesy that the things of your past that have held you captive that have made you feel less than that have been a condemnation or a curse against you I reverse that curse this morning by a prophetic decree I prophesy that you are fearfully and wonderfully made I prophesy that you have been restored and renewed I prophesy that you are not like David crying about what happened at Ziklag but you are like David pursuing overtaking and recovering all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ I prophesy that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us and he has anointed us to preach the gospel to give make free hallelujah those that are bound hallelujah to teach the meek hallelujah to bring beauty for ashes to those who we encounter I prophesy that the spirit of the Lord is upon us as the spirit of wisdom and understanding as the spirit of counsel and might as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord I prophesy that we shall walk in the fruit of the spirit and live out of the gifts of the spirit I prophesy that Luke 10 19 is our portion today in an uncommon way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I prophesy that we will tread upon serpents and scorpions now we will demonstrate power over all the works of the enemy all the power uh, of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us I prophesy that by the stripes of Yeshua the Amashiach of Nazareth we are healed in body soul and spirit mind will and emotion I prophesy that we will live long and prosper that we will be like Joshua we will be bold and very courageous we will lead others into the into the place of glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I prophesy that we shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth I prophesy that my nation Jamaica the land that God loves the land that we love shall be a nation whose God is the Lord constantly and consistently I prophesy that Jamaica shall not bow to the pressures of any demonic force coming from anywhere in the world anywhere inside or anywhere outside I prophesy that the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rules and reigns over this nation of Jamaica I prophesy that the blood of Jesus is at Gordon House the blood of Jesus Christ is in Parliament the blood of Yeshua the Amashiach of Nazareth is upon every ever member of Parliament's office their constituency office the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is upon every counselor every mayor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I prophesy this day that our leaders from the part from the governmental side from the church side from the corporate side shall come to know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord I prophesy that Jamaica shall no longer be known as the murder capital of the world I prophesy that Jamaica shall no longer be known for sexual immorality for scamming for scheming for corruption I reverse that curse and I cancel the assignment of those strong man the strong man of corruption I send you packing this morning the strong man of sexual immorality I send you on a I deport you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the strong man of crime and violence I deport you today I handcuff you I bind you with chains and your nobles with fetters of iron I bind you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ with the agreement of all that are gathered here in righteousness holiness and truth we bind every strong man working against our nations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we bind the strong man working in the president palace in the in the home of our prime minister in the prop in the palace uh, places at 10 Downing Street in Washington DC we bind every demonic force working against our leaders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we declare that our leaders shall have clear clarity of thought righteousness holiness and truth will be their portion father in the same way that demonic forces can influence our leaders to say and do wicked 
wicked evil things against your word your will and your purpose so can your angels and the holy spirit influence them to do righteous holy things and so lord god almighty we prophesy against every demonic assignment destroying our governmental systems destroying our constitution destroying oh god almighty righteousness holiness and truth destroying our families i prophesy against them this morning i prophesy by fire i prophesy by flood i prophesy by by righteousness i prophesy by blood lord jesus christ of nazareth let this day be a great day of transformation of reparation reparation our god of reconciliation in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth let this day be a day when we are redeemed and restored redeemed hallelujah 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 hey god from sins that was meant to die hallelujah redeemed hallelujah my soul condemned to die redeemed for a price i could not pay i owe hallelujah i'm redeemed father i prophesy this morning that we are redeemed our families are redeemed our nation is redeemed in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth let your will be done on this day hallelujah in jesus christ of nazareth's name i prophesy that your finances shall experience a shift in the mighty name of jesus christ i prophesy to your bank accounts i prophesy to your bills i prophesy to your debts i prophesy to those credit card debts right now right now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i prophesy to your income hallelujah and i command it to exceed your expenditure in the name of jesus christ i throw i propel your your income 200 times more than your expenditure in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare hallelujah that you shall not be a, a lover of money but money shall love you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i declare that money loves you money is attracted to you you are a money magnet in the mighty name of jesus christ but you shall not love money money shall chase after you as you chase after jesus money wealth prosperity good success shall chase after you in the mighty name matchless name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth you shall lack nothing i prophesy you shall lack no good thing in this season and in the seasons to come in the mighty name of jesus christ receive it receive it receive the prophetic word for it has been prophesied and it is done as you have prophesied god has heard you and god has done it in the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth all we have to do is believe and receive and God has done it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth glory to God most high praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above the heavenly host praise Father Son and Holy Ghost hallelujah 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 i see someone on, on on tiktok um called blue diamond her her handle is blue diamond and the lord says to tell you that even as your name is blue is diamond blue and diamond uh blue is is is, is a brilliant color a color of life a color of love a color of purpose a color of hallelujah that stands out and the lord says to tell you uh woman of god daughter of zion that you are one that stands out that your life is a life of color hallelujah tracy ann um that's your name um blue yes tracy ann tracy ann the lord says to tell you that you are a life that stands out that you're a life that is in purpose that you're a life that is pursuing you're going in the right direction and sometimes you feel confused sometimes you feel like i i'm not sure which direction i'm going which uh what is is my purpose what is uh, am i doing what god wants me to do but god says to tell you that your life stands out for him and that as you allow him more and more to just guide and guard and direct your flow that you will see a, a, a completeness 
in your life that is a representation of him the lord says to tell you that you will not continue this year the way that you did in the first half of this year god says as the first of august comes there shall be a shift in the atmosphere a shift in the very wind like you move from out of the heat of the sun into air conditioned space and there's just a feeling of ah and there's a feeling of absolute notice that there's a difference in the atmosphere a difference in how your body feel a realistic encounter god says to tell you tracy Ann, that a realistic encounter is about to be your transition from from july into august that as you step from july into august it shall be like stepping out of the hot sun in the day into an air-conditioned space god says hallelujah you are about to experience greatness and that greatness shall move you to a next level but the lord says that there's some things hear me carefully there's some things in your life and some people that sometimes sometimes Sometimes, sometimes maybe not all the time but sometimes you allow them to speak into your life you allow them to give you counsel and direction and advice and and often sometimes I hear the Lord says sometimes you're not even aware that they are di directing you and guiding how you um how you decisions you make and how you speak and how you live but God says you are to in this season in this season if you truly want to walk in victory Tracy and God says listen to him first anything anyone tell you hear them in respect hear them in honor but do not act on it until God gives you the go-ahead God says if you will allow him to lead you in this season he will lead you uh, into the green pastures and by the still waters God says it's been a while since you have seen your life blessed in the way that he wants to bless you but that's only because too many voices are speaking into your situation and circumstance even sometimes your own is distracting from what God is saying to you but God says if you will focus on him in this season in this second half of this year you shall see a magnificent upgrade of your life like never before I speak favor to you and to your family I speak the desires of your heart coming to pass according to God's will and purpose and I declare that the favor of God is upon you in this season Tracy even as it is upon every other fourth watch family member madugal i speak favor to you in this season favor 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 this week favor with those keys favor hallelujah and you don't have to ball out please god is not an unjust god god is not an unjust god like the unjust judge that the woman had to go begging constantly 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 god says to tell you my fourth watch family members that as you as you come before god holy confident in what he's able to do for you and through you that it is already done it is already done yes the enemy will try to block delay derail or deny but i prophesy to you this morning that god is watching over you god is protecting you and god will keep you in perfect peace with his mind with your mind stayed on him hallelujah i bless bermuda yes bermuda i see you are becoming consistent hallelujah i see watching from bermuda bermuda i bless you woman of god i bless you i speak god's peace to you and to your family i speak uncommon increase um hallelujah hallelujah uh miss bermuda i'm i'm hearing i'm hearing in my spirit wedding bliss i don't know if you're married or if you desire to be married please miss bermuda could you tell me if you are a wife if you are married hallelujah because i'm hearing wedding bliss so if you are married and things are not so so um thing that i only can tell you i i can't make it up i can only tell you what i'm sensing no you're not married okay i'm hearing wedding bliss wedding bliss that god is about to release wedding bliss for you come on you single ladies single men grab this word grab this word yes it's for sister in Bermuda directly but you can grab it by faith come on if you are not married hallelujah and wedding bliss bliss also means if you are married and there has been a rift in your marriage there's not been as much intimacy as much communication as much love as much tightness I come against that foul spirit that spirit that is blocking the women of God and men of God from coming together and getting married by the grace of God and I, I, 
I dis discharge and rebuke that spirit that is separating marriages, that is coming between married couples and causing this discomfort and disagreements and arguments and fights and even separation. I break that spirit now in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Sister Bermuda, um, I apologize. I can I can hardly see your um your name because it's so light on the screen. And my eyes are not the best at my age, even though I have great vision in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, um, my sister, I hear wedding bliss. So believe God, believe God. If you desire to be married, then believe God, because in this season, you're about to meet an awesome man. Hallelujah. He's going to need some work in the same way that you need some work. But God never gives us a complete, perfect, finished product, because there's always work for us to do so that we can continually walk in humility and submission hallelujah um pass my name is sadie all right sadie god bless you sadie i am happy for your girl i believe that between now and next year this time you shall either be engaged or or maybe even married as the lord would lead uh, a supernatural supernatural hallelujah uh, process shall take place for you in Bermuda. I'm not sure if you're dating right now or if you're in a relationship, but God is going to bring a, sit a, a shift in your situation and cause uh, that which to, should bring you into unity to happen. So if you're in love right now in a relationship before this year, this time next year, you shall be happily married and living the wedding bliss. And as long as you continue, Sadie, to give your relationship to, to the Lord, not to Satan by getting angry and easily angered and easily miserable and cantankerous on both sides, from both you and him but as we submit all things unto God no hallelujah I just started to date and it's just one month now my God what a God Lako Shetapa Mando Sondori Bianda hey God hey God hey God hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> oh God Almighty hallelujah Hallelujah. Guys, you hear this? God is so awesome. God is so awesome. Sadie says that she just started dating and it's just one month now. And God is always and God is already saying wedding bliss. And so, Father, we just pray for Sadie. We pray for this gentleman that she's dating. I pray, oh God Almighty, that you will bring them together in unity, not anything outside of your will. I pray, God, that they will keep themselves um, uh, sanctified and that they will walk holy and upright before you that they will not breach your laws or your rules and regulations concerning unity and i thank you lord god almighty that in short order they shall be unified before you for marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled i pray that they will submit to each other in humility and in peace and that they will live long and prosper that they will be fruitful and multiply and bring forth profit and prophetesses apostles evangelists teachers Teachers and pastors from her womb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, that Bermuda will not be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As this mighty woman of God and her husband take over and dominate in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God most high. The atmosphere in Bermuda has shifted. And even as it has shifted for you, woman of God, Hallelujah, Sadie, it has shifted for a lot of the other single ladies, hallelujah, in your church and the single men in your church as well. Come on, are you grabbing it? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What's happening with Martha? I see someone saying something about Martha. Martha, 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 hallelujah. I also saw someone else on TikTok asking for prayer. Hallelujah, please pray for me. Cam, 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 eight, seven, six. Hallelujah. Cam Cam 876. Glory to God. Father, I just lift up this, your daughter before you. She has cried out to you. Hallelujah. And her words have gone up. Hallelujah. And said, Lord, I need your intervention. I need your intervention. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, Cam Cam and uh, Martha, I declare the, the, uh, your blessing upon them. I ask that you will touch them even now, God, from the crown of their heads to their sole of the sole of their feet. May your anointing fall afresh upon them. May any plot, plan, scheme, and trap of the enemy that is locking them up, that is seeking to derail their purpose, I speak to that foul, unclean spirit now. Any spirit operating against Cam 
Sam Cam's purpose, against Martha's purpose. I break that spirit. I cancel that assignment. I rebuke and discharge that foul, unclean spirit that is seeking to delay, derail, or deny you both from coming into the purposes of God. I reject and renounce every ever unclean spirit working against you and against the other fourth watch family members now i command you you unclean spirit loose god's people loose god's people now i'm not asking you i command you by the authority of the lord jesus christ on this deliverance thursday i speak a deliverance from everything that easily besets you i speak a deliverance from your mindset i speak a deliverance from demonic attacks uh in from your issues and your circumstances and your encounters i speak deliverance from demonic attacks that has come through your mother's side and your father's side generationally i separate you from every umbilical cord of sin every umbilical cord of being born in sin and shaped in iniquity i separate you today in the name of jesus christ of nazareth if you were born in poverty lack and insufficiency i cut you loose from spirit of poverty now i cut you loose from the generational curse of poverty if your parents were were not no longer together your parents were married but they got divorced or they were not married even when they had you i caught you loose from any any spirit of not getting married any spirit of broken marriages any spirit of children out of wedlock i cut you loose some of those curses in the mighty name of jesus christ i cut you loose from the spirit of adultery from the spirit of fornication i draw from the spirit of god from from the sword of the spirit of god from heaven and i cut you loose some every demonic assignment every demonic thing i cut you i cut you i cut you i sever you from every satanic umbilical cord now and I release you into health and strength, prosperity and good success in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release you into joy, blissful happiness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I release you like the woman that needed the oil. Hallelujah. The woman whose children were about to be enslaved. The woman who was about to go through even greater levels of pain until she met a prophet. I prophesied to you this morning like Elisha prophesied to that woman i said hallelujah borrow some faith not a few call forth by faith some containers because god is about to cause you to pour into that container whatever money you have in your account god is about to use it like oil and as you pour it will not run out i prophesy to your bank account that whatever is in your bank account will not run out like the oil as long as you keep pouring in the name of jesus as long as you're a giver as long as you're a lover of the, of, of the souls of men, as long as you have ever given to any poor or broken, any widow or any orphan, as long as you have ever given out of your account to anyone, God says today, I will repay you. I will cause an overflow to be your portion. But hear me carefully. If you are not a giver, if you are tight and selfish and only for yourself, unfortunately, that has to change. You are not condemned. You're not You're not. Um, on your own but you need to give to the poor you need to set aside something to give to the poor someone on the street someone who is less fortunate someone who is hungry someone i know you're accustomed you guys are accustomed in where you are that only past pastors and church only says give to them give to them of course you must give to the church the church can't survive even in this in this devotional time i have three phones here light everything there's bills to be paid but i'm never gonna badger you because god is my supplier if god touches you and says send something to the man of god hallelujah then that's on you and him he will have to bless you for that if i ask you to send it and appeal to you then i will have to pray that god will bless you but if god speaks to you then you and god will will be in that covenant and that contract amen but i'm saying to you though from where i sit I am now telling you this, that you need to make a concerted effort to be a blessing to the poor and the needy, to the orphans. Don't pass hungry children on the street and not try to help them. I know some of us don't have it in the way that we would like to have it and to be able to do it. But I'm telling you, man, if you truly want to be blessed, your main blessing is not in giving to the church outside of your tithe and offering, of course. That is that that God has set. 
and that God is, is has put in place and that's automatic but I'm talking about your seed I'm talking about your, your, your life of love if you share your life of love with the people who are less fortunate you might only have a thousand dollars someone has zero and so if you give them 10% of that which is a hundred dollars come on glory to God it moves them from zero to a hundred and that's a great movement it might seem simple to some people it might seem insignificant to others but I'm here to tell you that those guys on the street begging and wiping windshield when you give them $20 a coin that can hardly buy anything but it's a start it's a, a, a first step on a journey and if everyone gave them $20 for the day uh, at the end of the day they would be in a great position and so don't worry about how much you are able to give to the poor to the widows to the orphans to those that are hungry and in need just give other persons will give as well God doesn't just have you when Elijah got all, all up in himself and was hiding in the cave and God asked him what is he doing there he said in his in his moment of weakness oh, they have killed all your prophets and now they're after me oh, hallelujah they want to kill me too and so I'm hiding to preserve what you have gotten the last of your prophets I am hiding to preserve that means I am making sure that I don't cause you to be profitless in the land what a mistake I um, Elijah made what a mistake Elijah made because as much as he was deeply rooted in God as much as he was a prophet of God and we can never say anything bad about Elijah because he's amazing so this is not to point out something bad I'm saying to you that any moment in time we can seek to to um, or we can fall into the trap of not recognizing that God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. He is all-knowing, ever-powerful, ever-faithful, ever-true. God knew that they had killed um, so many of the prophets. He made plans long before Elijah was born. But Elijah, in a moment of weakness, in a moment of sorrow, in a moment, hallelujah, of failing, forgot who God was. And I say was because at the time of him, because God is never was. God always is. Come on, glory to God. God. God is yesterday and he is today and he will be is tomorrow. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so there are times when we will forget and do things thinking, hey, God, I am out of money. I only have $100 in my account. $1,000, $10,000, whatever the currency and whatever that value of that currency is and you're saying god don't you see don't you see that i am i'm i'm my account is down to to, to minus hallelujah <laughs> i was having a conversation with my wife last night and i was telling her what the bank balance is and she was saying lord of mercy why 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 and i'm saying hey 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 because that's an opportunity for a miracle come on somebody hallelujah that's an opportunity for a miracle of God. And so we never see things from the negative side. If God, if, if, if we look and see that um, everybody is, 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 is like Elijah, all of, all of the people are not experiencing good things. They're, they're, they seem to be dead and you're the only one left. And so don't hide. Say, yes, God, I thank you that it seemed to me like I'm the only one left. But I know that you are a God who has plans. I know that the enemy shall never be able to take anything from you that you don't give him and so lord it looks like i am the only one left it looks like i'm the only one not getting blessed it looks like i'm the only one that is poor broke busted and disgusted it looks like i'm the only one that is in low bar it looks like i'm the, it looks like i'm the, it looks like i'm the but i thank you god almighty that you are powerful and mighty you have said that you'll never leave me or forsake me you said that i will never be put to shame as long as i keep looking to you you said that i'm planted in your courtyard you said that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made you said that I'm blessed and highly favored come on people of God we got to go off what God said because in the absence of what God says we will be like Adam and Eve if we listen to what Satan says compared to what God says we will be put out to pasture and not good pasture and so God had to draw up Elijah and say Elijah what are you doing here what are you saying God had to give him a crash course in Godship. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I just made that up. 
<laughs> I don't even know. I do. I know that there's no word called Godship, but hey, you understand what I mean, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't judge me. <laughs> Praise God. God had to give him a crash course. Godship 101. Homeboy, hey, come on now. Come on now. I'm not a man. I'm not limited to the situations and circumstances. I am God all by myself. Come on, people of God. So many times we Fort Watch family members are in situations like Elijah. And we don't we don't understand it. We don't recognize it. We don't realize. Hallelujah. And so we go into a position like Elijah. Oh God, don't you see my, my rent is due? Oh God, don't you see I can't pay my mortgage? I'm behind two months in my rent. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And we complain like Elijah. And God is saying, don't you know that I've reserved for you blessings? Hallelujah. That is beyond what you could ask, think, or imagine. Don't you know that I have people, 7,000, that have not bowed their knees to the image of Baal, that is ready to come and be a blessing to you? Don't you know that I reserve destiny helpers? You might look like things are not going for you now. It might look like your sickness is going to be unto death. But don't you know that I reserve the man of God, a woman of God, who will come find you and lay hands on you, who will call you and speak a word into your spirit to encourage you, to raise you up again. Come on, somebody. Don't you know that I am God Almighty who has a plan for every situation and circumstance no matter what it looks like when it started or who's responsible no matter what we have done no matter what sins we have committed no matter what crime no matter what unbelief no matter what wickedness we have done in our past god has a plan for that already glory to god somebody should say amen thank you jesus thank you lord that you have a plan hallelujah to redeem man because you can hallelujah glory to god most high hallelujah and so guys do never don't get despondent don't get discouraged hallelujah hallelujah um martha in saint lucia oh martha, martha is from saint lucia martha we not only bless you but we bless your country saint lucia we declare that saint lucia is a wonderful island a beautiful place i've never been there but i hear that it is amazingly beautiful and so i bless saint lucia to continue to stand strong to be to walk in the fullness of righteousness holiness and truth as the bible says that those who bless israel and speak peace over jerusalem they shall be blessed so i declare to day that St. Lucia shall be a place where Jesus lives, a place where the Holy Spirit has freedom and reign from the government to the people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every lukewarm church in St. Lucia to receive fire now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and every firebrand church in St. Lucia to blaze fire bigger in the mighty name of jesus christ i speak a fire of god across all the caribbean islands in the name of jesus christ may the churches begin to blaze for many days in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah so saint lucia we welcome you bermuda we welcome you trinidad and tobago we welcome you uh, bahamas we welcome you every other nation of the caribbean and nations of the world we welcome you and declare your nation blessed in the mighty mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People of God, I'm going to ask you a special favor as we're about to go into the word. I'm going to ask you in your own private time, please, please hear me sincerely. Hear me sincerely. I'm very, very serious now. I'm going to try my best not even to rhyme so that you don't take it out of time. Amen. We need to travail in this season. We need to remember the United States of America in our prayers. Please, I have no agenda except the agenda of God. Hear me. Hear me. We need to remember the United States. I don't care where you live. I don't care what your experience has been and how you think about America. You might be saying, boy, the, the agendas that the American government is pushing now, let them face their consequence, let them die on the sword. There is hardly anyone I would believe that is here this day on this day 
praying and believing God for their own blessing and favor that doesn't have a relative or a distant relative that lives in the United States. Almost everyone in the world has someone, some way connected to the United States. And if anything should ever happen to that nation, as their government is trying so hard to pull down on themselves, the American governmental system, and this is not from a condemnating place, this is from a place of compassion and mercy. The American governmental system is on a collision course with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that's a losing battle. Paul, Saul I should say, was on a collision course with Jesus. He accomplished some things over a period of time, but after a while, he was confronted by a source, by a force that made him recognize that he was mere mortal and nothing else. I'm saying to you that the American system of governance needs prayer in this season. And not on their payroll. I want nothing from them. Nothing at all. But I have many family members, many probably much more family members living in the States than living in Jamaica. And if America becomes like Sodom and Gomorrah or like Nineveh, and I'm not talking about the Nineveh that repented because for most people, they think that Nineveh was completely restored and for the rest of their lives, Nineveh was okay. Nineveh repented for that season, but Nineveh in the Bible returned to their ways of wickedness and was destroyed. So hear me carefully. Pray consistently and urgently for the United States of America because that nation is the biggest flag that represents democracy. It's the biggest flag that represents, hallelujah, what God wants to do in the Western world. And if America should fall, God forbid, God forbid, what we know as democracy, what we know as, as, as the source of, 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 um, of travel, of, of family, of, of, um, of help, of next level, of stability would fall with them like the Tower of Babel. And so we must pray, if not for the nation itself, for our family members that are there. Pray for the nation on behalf of our family members that are there. Pray for America, people of God. Because we often take for granted that the root of America's foundation is so solid that it can never fall. That it can never fall. America has become an idol, a god unto itself. And it is doing things through its governmental offices that seeks to tell the world that we are God and what we say is what counts. America. Please, I beg you, I beg you from the heart of God. You are not God. You are not God. And I do not want your nation to come into a collision course with the Almighty God. Please, I'm begging you with tears in my heart. Please, pray for this nation because they are on a collision course with God and it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. Please, if you know any governmental officials, anyone, just pray for them because they are on a collision course like Saul. They, America is kicking against the prick. Is it America only? No, England and Canada and, um, and Germany are kicking against the prick as well. But you know, the truth is, let's be honest and fair. With no disrespect intended, if England fell tomorrow, and I hope not, and we pray for you as well, England, Great Britain, it, 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 as long as America stays strong, the world would not miss England. England and English people would miss England, but the world would not miss England. Some African nations would miss England, but the world would not miss England. England fell before, in, in, in thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, and psh, here you are. But America is a melting pot of the world. It represents that which people aspire and dream of. And so if America was missing, of course God would, would, would preserve his, his world and his kingdom same way, but that's not what I'm talking about. Amen? If Germany went missing tomorrow, most people don't even remember Germany unless they hear about them in the news. If Germany was to fall tomorrow, 
by their wickedness and by the evil that they do against God and against God's people. Nobody would miss them except the Germans and those who have family members there. But the world, even those who don't like America, would miss America if it fell. And so we, we pray for the others as well, but we pray for America in particular because America has started to raise itself like an idol. America has started to operate like Egypt. America has started to operate like the Philistines. And that is not good. And so there might be some Americans, some diehard, fully blood, red-blooded Americans that are hearing this now and feel a little funny because there is a, there is a, a die-heartedness, a, a patriotic um, kind of blood that flows through every American, that if you don't say all nice and fluffy and wonderful things about their nation, they get a little antsy, may not even want to come back to devotion or any of those things. Please, if that's the way you're feeling right now, that's a devil. That's Satan trying to tell you, don't accept the reality so that you can travail for your nation. I'm not trying to speak against the United States. I just explained how badly we need for America to continue to exist as a nation. Amen? But we must pray. We have allowed America to be in the hands of Lucifer. And now we see what we're getting. Now we see what we're getting. So we must pray and travail before God like Abraham when he was saying, Lord, don't be mad at me. But if there be 20, would you still destroy them? And God says, if there is 20, I won't. He says, Lord, allow me one more time. If there be 10, will you still destroy them? And God says, I will not destroy them if there is 10. And so Abraham travailed before God on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom and Gomorrah was in an, a deplorable state. An irreparable state but God was willing to go the extra mile for his friend Abraham I'm saying to you this morning that we are friends of God because the Spirit of God is in us and so let's travail let's travail because there's more than 10 righteous in America let's pray for this nation and for the other nations Canada is on that radar as well on God's radar Great Britain is on God's radar Nations that are mini-gods, operating like they're mini-gods, destroying lives as they feel like, forcing evil on other nations as they feel like, just like the Philistines and the Assyrians and the Hittites and the Jebusites of the past. Those spirits are still operating in these nations. But I dare say we must be the children of Israel and we must declare that God will come to our rescue against these foul spirits and we will pursue and overtake the righteousness that existed in Canada, in America, in Germany, in Great Britain before Satan took over. We will chase him out. We will send the footsteps of a mighty army like the four lepers and we will chase out Satan and his Luciferian agenda out of these nations by prayer and fasting and declaring and prophesying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My American friends, you're not vexed with me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you guys and we want to see you live long and prosper. We want to see your nation restored to the nation that was respected because it was a nation under God. A nation under God that believed in the things of God, in righteousness, holiness and truth. When I first came into knowledge of America, it was a nation so admired, so admired because its principles and its foundation was built and that which could not be destroyed. But then the system began to allow all manner of evil concupiscence to come in and it was just a matter of time before the Trojan horse broke open and the wickedness of the world would start to spread as a cancer. In America but God is healer God is healer for you United States of America God is healer Great Britain God is healer Canada God is healer Germany God is healer China Russia God is able to heal as cancer spread God is able to spread healing God is able to spread deliverance 
and to restore. But we have to believe. We have to believe. And we have to travail. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So please remember, deliberately pray for the United States of America. Deliberately. Deliberately. I know some of us as Christians, we despise what they are doing. We will we, we become so. Some have even started to pray against them. That's not good. That's not what God wants. That's not what God wants, guys. My dear brother Marlon, his son lives there. If you pray against America, you're praying against Marlon's son. So let's not pray against America. Let's not pray for America's destruction. And believe me, I must be honest because transparency is absolute. The things that have happened and the things that I've seen and the way that they're going about things, I have thought in my heart, this place needs to be humbled. This place needs to be torn down. But then God gave me greater wisdom and revelation and says, so what happens to all of your family and all of the people that I love if this place is torn down? And I had to repent and come to a place now where I can have this conversation and say, come on guys, let's band together and travail for the United States. Because what you see happening and what you hear, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, what you see happening and what you hear is not as a result of the humans. The humans are just a vessel. It's the spirit of the Amalekite and the Hittite and the Philistine and the Amorites and the Jebusites and the Achanites that are functioning through these people with an intent to fight against God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray against sin for the souls of men. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. 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 So my friends in Bermuda, in St. Lucia, um, all of you from all over, please pray for the United States. And I hope I explained enough the reason why we should. It's not just because you want America to continue in the way that they are living now. No, that's not why we're praying for them. We're praying for them because the longer you stay in a situation is the more opportunity you have to come to agreement and to come to grips with who God is. So look how long God allowed Saul to function the way he functioned. Look how many Christians he destroyed and put in prison before God met him on Damascus Road. So we don't know where, where America is or Canada is or Great Britain is or Germany is on the, the road. But at some point in time, they are going to be on their way to Damascus. And God's going to confront them and restore them for his, glory, for his glory. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we look forward to that. We praise God that he is the God of the Damascus Road. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will meet Jamaica on that Damascus Road as well. And restore unto us the joy of his salvation and renew a right spirit in this nation hallelujah glory to god okay so quickly um too much of my time has been uh, or god's time has been used up already but we still want to continue to pursue hallelujah if it's even two verses each morning as we continue in titus chapter 2 so please turn with me in your bibles if you are able if you're not driving or if you're at your desk or somewhere and you take a, a little two minutes break to just look in your Bible on your phone or if you have your, your solid Bible. Guys, it's very, very important. I know most of us these days uh, use electronic Bible and electronic Bibles are good. But, um, you know, there's something about if you are able to, to, to have your solid Bible, especially devotional time if you're at home and you're comfortable. Don't use no electronic device, man. If you're on the bus, on the train, or um, at your office and you, you need to use an electronic Bible for the sake of, um, of convenience, that's fine. No issue. Remember, it's not no condemnation thing. But if you're comfortably at home like me and you can um, sit down with your Bible, it is so much nicer to be able to underline, to jot notes about a word, a revelation that you got or that you heard coming from this side of the fence 
hallelujah and it, it's so much nicer to be able to highlight and to make a note to go back and say wow i didn't see it this way but now i'm gonna look at it this way so it's it's so much more when you're on your electronic device often yes you can highlight but it's not as easy to make notes and to to, to um to just interact with the word uh, with the kind of intimacy that we would like so if you can remember it's not no command or no demand i'm just saying to you that it, it leaves a certain level of um going back and and um and be deep and deeper if you're using the hard copy so if you can please your hard copy okay so yesterday we did we're, we're in titus titus somebody type it on the screen for me please titus chapter 2 titus chapter 2 t-i-t-u-s titus is found um just before um philemon and just after hebrews hallelujah no sorry what am i talking about titus comes just after timothy after second timothy that's where titus is um before philemon and just after second timothy amen that's where titus is titus chapter 2 titus chapter 2 yesterday we said you must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine you must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine so first of all god is confirming that we are teachers of the word we are teachers of the word yes titus chapter 2 he says we are teachers of the word and if we're teachers of the word we must seek and practice and desire and pray about only teaching sound doctrine there are things and, and situations and circumstances that will always happen i notice in these days in these times persons will quick 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 to hear someone say something and it is not it's seemingly a little off center it's seemingly a little out of context it's seemingly a little off and they 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 have not watched or listened to the full life of this person they have not seen the consistency of sound doctrine for this person but the one time they see or hear from this minister this man of god this woman of god and they make a mistake or they they they, they um their, their flesh um intertwines with the revelation of the word and they miss it a little bit um starting from verse one sir kirk from verse one verse one hallelujah and they and they miss it a little bit people just start to to um to take the 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 the, the little clip or the little thing and they send it around and they said this is a false teacher this is a heretic this is a a, a a a satanist and they begin to ascribe some very damaging and disrespectful and dishonoring words and titles to people that are god's people but they just made a mistake listen to me carefully <laughs> listen to me carefully please i'm begging you fourth watch family members fourth watch family members do not be quick to condemn unless you are quick to receive condemnation do not be quick to give what we are not quick to receive i used to be so i used to stop listening to people who i hear say something that i don't agree with or that I don't like or that I know is not of God but I realized that in the same way I can say you know how many times in the past I would get angry and cross when 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 Pastor Marsha would draw me up about something I said and the way I said it and how it may have been misunderstood and how it may have offended or hurt some people and if people were to judge me not on the length of my character not on the strength or the foundation of my love for god and my willingness to be open and transparent and and honest before god if they were to judge me by the various mistakes i've made if you had the time to go back through all of the devotional times and sermons that i preached you would have heard things that made you say hold on Rowan no god how did he get that and if you were to judge me on those mistakes you would have written me off and we would have no connection whatsoever so please i beg you we are training up mature people 
who have a heart after God, not a heart after Satan. Satan wants to cut off people immediately. Listen, there are some people who are calling some people witch and warlock, and they have no clue what a witch and warlock is. Some of them have witches and warlocks right in their face. Some of them are married to witches and warlocks. Some of them are working for witches and warlocks and don't even know. But they're calling someone of God who made a mistake. Are there some witches and warlocks pretending to be pastors? Of course they are. But we're too loose and too quick and too easy to take the sword to people who are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and who made a mistake because we don't know them enough. We have not been around their life. We have not seen their fruit. We see them on TV. We see them on a little clip. Or we see them in a one hour message. Or we see them in a one message. We're not going to their church. We're not seeing their lifestyle constantly. We're not seeing anything about them. But on one little message, we begin to speak some curses and we begin to roll out some demons out of our mouths about these people. The devil is a liar. Fort Watch family, I beg you, don't be one of those. Please. Please, please don't send it around when you get it and don't do it. I am begging you. If you see or hear something that you think is, 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 is completely out of sound doctrine, is wrong completely, pray for the person. Pray, God, if this is your son, if you're not sure, God, if this is your daughter, I pray that you will bring revelation. And correction of this doctrinal error because I know that this your son is not trying to deliberately deceive or confuse anyone and so this is a simple error like I have made so many times in my life Lord so father I stand in the gap for this man of God this woman of God today and I pray that you will straighten them up and not let anyone begin to chastise them or destroy them as a result of this mistake in Jesus name that's what God wants from us that's what God desires from us too many people have become heroes by destroying other other people of God the devil is a liar please foot watch family I'm begging you if you love me I'm not even talking about if you love God now because sometimes we love God but we still do evil things because he's not right before us as a human being holding us accountable and pointing his finger in our foreheads. I'm saying to you, if you love me, because people are going to do this to me. It's three years and a little bit that we've been doing this fourth watch. And as it grows, as it becomes a root, a staple in society, people are going to be watching, waiting. Hmm. Let me see when he's going to mess up. Let me hear what he's going to say. Oh, you hear him say about America this morning? Oh, this, he's preaching against America. They are, go, they are looking. Satan is looking for an opportunity to paint me as a heretic. And it is those who know me, who know my heart, who know the history of my resume as a man of God and as a lover of the people will be able to stand and say, no, you're talking about the wrong man. He may have said that wrong or he may have... Um, you may have misunderstood or he may have miscommunicated, but I know him. It's not everyone that knows you is going to be able to defend you. Come on. And because we're humans, we have to be careful. Are there some people that we're going to need to walk away from? Hey, I've walked away from many. Many. But not at a whim. Not at a word that came forth wrongly. Not at a misunderstanding or a revelation. No. Come on, people of God. Let's be mature. Stop sending around foolishness that people use to judge other people they don't know. And these are good people that are doing this, but Satan, like with Peter, jump into their lives at a moment and they hear something that they don't agree with and they begin to speak from the voice of Satan. No, Lord. You can't do this. This cannot happen. And Jesus had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. You have not the things of God as your mandate and priority. Let us try our best not to have God have to rebuke that devil speaking through us against his people when they make a mistake. But let us have God say, yes, this is my beloved son, my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. My son messed up, my daughter messed up, and they prayed and called out to me to bring correction rather than condemnation. Amen. 
what is the better testimony that God can pat you on the shoulder and says well done because you have, re you, have, you have interceded and restored my son or that you have spread and caused people to stop dealing or stop listening to God's word through his son or his daughter would you want to be guilty of that careful people of God as I speak to myself I speak to you in Jesus name so 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 sound doctrine is important for us to recognize and to appreciate um, so that sound doctrine doesn't necessarily cause us to reject or re re rebuke or discharge or destroy people but sound doctrine also says in love I restore in love I reconcile come on amen that's sound doctrine come on people of God sound doctrine reconciles and restores redeems no matter what no matter how bad come on people of God hallelujah so we did verse 1 and 2 hallelujah it talks about um, teaching older men teach older men to be temperate um, and so on and to um, to be self-controlled and sound in faith in love and in endurance so basically what um, what the writer to Titus uh, I think it was Paul that was was saying is that listen we need to have a firm foundation that's what we seek to do and to purport every single morning Monday to Friday in the fourth watch devotion we seek to solidify God's people to cause a foundation to be in us that when the winds of time come when the situations and circumstances come we are firmly rooted in him all right verse 3 verse 3 says likewise teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live to be reverent in the way they live not to slander to, so to be reverent means to be transparent in the word of God to be righteous to be holy to always be thinking positive not negative to always be, be, be thinking blessing not curse come on to always be thinking uplift and encourage not condemn and destroy come on somebody hallelujah and so he's saying older women and that older women there now doesn't necessarily mean come on Sonia Lynch you are one of those persons I am singling you out you are one of those persons chosen because of your heart to be an older woman that will teach the younger women how to walk in the fullness of God's goodness amen and so hallelujah it says that as an older woman and older there I was explaining just now is not older just in age it's older it also in experience in revelation in anointing in understanding and so someone who is 25 26 27 28 years old but have been saved from they were nine and have been walking diligently and sus and and, um, and circumspect I was about to say suspect circumspect before God they would have achieved in that year so they saved that nine by the time they are 15 they would have been six years come on six years walking with God six years by 15 by 20 they would have been 11 years walking with God by 25 they would have been 16 years walking with God if my math is correct so at 25 this person is still young in chronological age young in their exposure to the world but extremely mature after 16 years of walking diligently and learning sitting at the feet of the leaders of the fathers going to Bible school and all these things so at 25 this person would have been young in age come on but a senior and elder in the things of the spirit come on somebody and so that person would be considered an older woman in the faith at that point in time and so that older woman must demonstrate reverence come on and not slander or be addicted to much wine and wine there means the wine the literal drinking wine but also the wine or the things that will intoxicate you you must wear a Prada shoes if you can afford it buy a Prada, a Prada shoes wear it it's nice it's beautiful I love seeing um, nice shoes on women's feet but you must not be so drunk in the desire for a Prada shoes or for a nice car or for a nice house or for whatever that you see God send you a mighty man of God that is gonna take you to great places uh, but you're saying uh-uh 
you don't look like you can afford a Prada shoes for me. You don't look like you can afford to cause me to live where I want to live. So God could never send you for me. That means you're drunk on the wine of the world, the wine of things. Come on, can I teach you? Can I get you drunk on the things that will cause you to miss, cause you to be dis, in disarray, cause your, 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 your systems not to operate the right way? When one is drunk, it is difficult for them to maneuver a car. When one is drunk on the things of the world, it's difficult for us to maneuver righteousness, holiness, and truth. And so as an older woman, as a senior executive, as a senior assistant in the kingdom of God, we must be careful not to be drunk on the things of the world and not to be drunk on wine that you drink as well. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so, so you must be, you must not slander. You not be, not be a slanderer, and you must not be addicted to much wine. And that addicted there is very important um, to all men, men and women, because men are addicted to different things in the world than women. But there are some similarities in things that we're addicted to. So both men and women are addicted to money. Both, both men and women are addicted to things. Come on, but men. Are addicted to some things that women are not addicted to like sex most men not all are addicted to sex women for the most part only a few would be classified as addicted to sex women yeah if my habit my habit I like it and it's part of my DNA and I desire it but I'm not addicted to it I don't have to get it at all cost with some men that is the case can I teach adult amen Hallelujah. So we must not be addicted to anything in this world. We must not be addicted to anything in this world. Some persons may be thinking in their minds, no, pastor, the only thing I'm addicted to is Jesus. Can I tell you something? I don't know that Jesus wants us to be addicted to him. I don't know that Jesus wants us to be addicted to him because anything you're addicted to you have lost your free will to decide to do or not to do when you're addicted. When someone is addicted to drugs, when the drugs call, they can't say yes or no. They have to just go because they're addicted. If you're addicted to sin, come on, hear me somebody, please. If you're addicted, you have no control over the situation. So I don't know that God wants us, and I'm, I'm being very careful because I know people are waiting to cut clips and say, hear what the man of God say? God no want you to love him completely. No, God does not want us to be addicted in the sense of the word because once we're addicted, like cocaine, like morphine, like any, any of those things that are, um, are addictive, if we become addictive, we become tunnel visioned and centered not by decision, but by the lure of that thing that we're addicted to. Come on. Amen. So God wants us to each day make a choice. If I was addicted to reading the word, I would never watch a movie. I would never listen to anything in my car. I would never go anywhere. I would never have any enjoyment time with my family because all I would want to do is, hey, I'm going to read the word. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to pray. If I was addicted to prayer, when my wife said, babes, come lay down and hug me up now. Come let us talk. No, babes, can't do that now. I need to pray. Can't do that now. I need to go read the word. That's what an addiction would do. And that would destroy family. It would destroy life. It would make you not eat. It would make you not sleep. Addiction destroys. So God does not want us to be addicted to him. He wants us to make a free will choice. In the midst of our life that he has given us an opportunity to live, he wants us to choose to include him in a great way. Come on. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So we're in verse 3, but we're out of time. And so we'll pick up again tomorrow. And um, I, I, I promise I will try not to, um, not to go on so long about other things so that we can dive deeper into the word. Because the word just brings some revelation till our um, Aunt Jacqueline is saying, true, 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 so true. God is good. We love God's revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been an awesome morning. I thank you so much for joining us. God is faithful. God is good. God is kind. For those who are participating in um, our communion time, please get your communion so that we can have communion. Now it's time to pray. Hallelujah. 
Father in heaven, I give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you for this awesome time this morning with your children, with your family. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that by your Holy Spirit, you have, you have brought direction, correction, and revelation to your people on this day. Have your way in our lives and through our lives, O oh God. May we go forth with strength and boldness and courage, hallelujah, like Joshua, as we lead others across the Jordan and into the promised land of this Thursday. May we be a blessing to those who we encounter a manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit as needed for your glory and for your namesake. Sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now, O God. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success according to your word and according to your name in the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in, in faith, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, Sister Jackie. Sister Jackie is asking, if you're addicted, is it a part of lust? And some persons would, would, would define lust as something different. But you can lust even after the word of God. And lust is what becomes, lust is what manifests as an addiction. So you're lusting after something and it grows to become an addiction. Amen? Addiction is not, just like lust, is not a part of God's vocabulary. It's not what God desires of us. Not addiction, not lust. Lust will lead loss can become an addiction and then as an addiction loss then becomes an attraction of sin and wickedness and destruction amen and so will addiction so yes sister jackie you're right hallelujah england get a diamond this morning praise god from whom all blessings flow and likewise he took the cup he blessed it and took a sup and he said drink this is my blood the blood of the new covenant as often as you drink of it you do it in remembrance of me Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you all so very much. You are so interactive and so on point with your comments and your um and your involvement. Uh, it was a truly a pleasure to see someone from St. Lucia and from Bermuda this morning and we hope that we will continue to have a national a worldwide flavor of participants in our uh, devotional time so please if you have family members and friends in other nations invite them because we like to bless people from other nations and to bless their nation as well and so if you know christians or non-christians from other places in the world other nations other tongues as long as they can understand um, my English and with a little tint of hint of patwa from time to time, please invite them to come and we will enjoy. Please remember when you come off, if you have not already shared, please share the broadcast with your family and friends so they can see what you're talking about and what you're inviting them to come be a part of. I give you a quick testimony um, on Monday. A plumber came because my toilet was having a little issue and he also came to change the filter on the water outside and when he changed the filter and he was walking to go throw it away he said to me um you're Ron Wade I, I I see you and I said plumber okay in my mind and I said where, where you see me and he says I was going through Facebook and I saw your devotion and I started to watch it and I've watched a few since then he says, I, I really like them. And I'm saying, wow, never take for granted who will be blessed by what you share. Because not everyone will come and, and come across it, but everyone will see it if you send it to them. Some will reject it, but some will accept it and become members of this family. Amen. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May the Lord bless your family. 
May the Lord bless your business. May the Lord bless your work of your hands. May the Lord bless your feet that wherever it trod, you will own. May the Lord cause you to tread upon serpents and scorpions. May the Lord protect you with his rod and staff as you go through the valley of the shadow of death. But may you go through quickly and end up on the other side with a table spread before you in the presence of your enemies. May you be anointed with oil today. And may your cup of blessing run over. May goodness and mercy follow you wherever you go. And may the place that God has prepared for you, may you be there and may you fulfill purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day, God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day, his way, in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you. And we love the whole of honor too. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, Be blessed, man. Have a super fantastic day. God's way. Amen. Please remember to do something good for someone today. I charge you, go out of your way. Make a conscious decision. Boy, I believe what this pastor is saying is of God. And so I'm going to make an effort. Don't just drive in your own world or walk in your own world or jump on the bus in your own world. Make a concerted effort to do something for someone today, no matter how small. You may not have it financially, but you have it emotionally. You have it word. You have it in some way, shape or form. Share what you have with someone else and God will be pleased. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye. Hallelujah. Our God.